Over the past two or three months, we've been looking at the inequality module and gone over the four inequalities that you could get asked about in the exam. Age, class, gender and ethnicity. So today we're going to do an overview of the entire unit. We're going to go through exam structure and also do a brief overview of each of those four inequalities, knowing the core debates and the most important studies and perspectives of each one. Good morning. So today's going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to be throwing information at you a mile a minute. Um, what I'm going to do today is basically an overview of the whole inequality module. So, you know, I'm going to be covering things quickly, just kind of giving you the brief overview of the whole unit, you know, just like a crash course, if you like. Um, this is made with the intention of you going back over your notes, your course pack, the textbook, the previous videos to go into more detail. So this is not going to be comprehensive. So I'm only going to be pointing out the most important studies. I'm not going to go into all of them. Um, so bear that in mind, you, you know, you wouldn't be able to use this to, to make an essay, essentially. It's just to give you the, the broad brush um, from which to go further in, in, in depth with your notes and, and the other videos and that. Um, so first it's just quickly going over the exam structure for the whole unit and what you'll expect on, on Friday. So we've done plenty of these so you should be fairly familiar with it but it's just worth reminding ourselves that this would be in the same paper as the research methods unit that we're going to start after June, sorry after the half term. Um, and it encompasses two questions that we've both done pretty extensively. Uh, the 20 mark question, which is, you know, outline ways that certain inequality affects your life in life chances. That's focusing on evidence, essentially. Then you have the 40 mark question, which again, we've done plenty of, which is the, you know, uh, explanations, the big evaluations, the big 40 mark questions. Um, so you will have both of those in that paper. Um, so now we'll just go through each of the four inequalities and I'll give you the kind of main debates, the main theories that you'll kind of need to revise when you come to your final exams. Obviously, you know, you'll know your questions for Friday, so, um, but I would still kind of use the time to, you know, really revise a lot of the units, especially the ones that we've done through the, through the YouTube lectures. Um, where you might not have learned it quite as well as you would have in, in the classroom, depending on how you found it. The first type of inequality that we looked at was gender. And there's two main perspectives that you'll be focusing on in the gender inequality side of things. On the one side, you have the functionalist view, which would argue that generally the gender roles that we assign for each sex are down to the biological inclination towards the instrumental role, the breadwinner role, for men, and the expressive role, the more caregiver maternal role, for women. The most important study to know here is Parsons, who makes that exact argument. He would argue that biology is a driving force in determining these two roles for the genders, but that this is reinforced by socialization. Think of biological differences between men and women as starting the train off on the track and then socialization keeping it on. But opposed to functionalism are the three strands of feminism. These would argue that there is no real biological purpose for these gender roles. They would look at gender roles in different societies through time and in different locations and they would argue that actually gender is a social construct made by stereotypes and socialization. The three main strands are liberal, radical and Marxist feminist. Liberal feminists argue that really the cause of gender inequality is stereotypes that are placed on each gender, mostly through socialization when they're very young. The most important study to know here for this one is Oakley and her three terms of socialization. The next strand is radical feminism. They would argue that men have an oppressive control over women and they construct society in a way that reinforces that control. And finally you have the Marxist feminists that would argue that 
patriarchy and the domination of men is rooted in capitalism, as it is created by capitalism and helps sustain capitalism. So with gender, there's a number of questions that they could ask you in relation to gender inequality. In terms of the 20 mark questions, they may kind of go down a specific gender. So they may say, outline ways in which men are disadvantaged um, in, the in their life chances or outline ways in which women are disadvantaged. If they don't specify a gender and they just say that outline ways that gender can impact your life chances, then you'll want to kind of um, divide it as a balanced answer between men and women. In terms of the 40 mark questions, they could ask you a number of things. Many of them we've kind of already done, um, or my groups would have already done before we kind of broke up. So they could ask you to assess a particular view. So they could ask you to assess the view that gender inequality is due to role socialization, or it's due to different um, choices made by men and women, or it's due to biology. Um, they could ask you to assess a particular theory. So they could say outline and assess the feminist view of um, gender inequality. Again, I think we've already done one like that. So um, the kind of main theories we'll need to know here are going to be functionalism, the three strands of feminism. Um, I would also make sure you probably understand the concepts of preference theory and dual systems theory. I would probably add those to your arsenal as well. The second type of inequality that we look at is class. Now this is generally divided between functionalism and Marxism with Weberians sitting somewhere in the middle. Functionalists, like Parsons, would argue that the class inequality system performs positive functions for society, as we reward people generally who more closely correspond with the values of society. As a consensus theory, functionalists would argue that generally there is an agreement on where rewards should be distributed. And so, really, in order to achieve higher class status, all you have to do is work in a way that corresponds with that shared agreement on norms and values. However, conflict theories, most prominent amongst them Marxism, would argue that actually there is no such agreement on norms and values and that class inequality is the product of exploitation Obviously, the most commonly cited person in this regard is Karl Marx himself. He argued that the bourgeoisie oppressed the proletariat through pressing down on their wages. But in the middle between these two is the Weberian perspective that would, as we've looked at before, argue that class is based on a series of situations, party, status and market situation. Social mobility for Weber can and does exist, but it does depend on the society. So the main theories that we need to know for the class side of things are going to be functionalism, Marxism and Weber. A couple of questions you might get asked on the 40 mark side of things. You could get asked to assess whether or not the social class system is beneficial. Obviously that would be the kind of functionalist view versus the Marxist view saying that it's negative, functionalism saying it's positive. Um, more than likely, I would probably, if I was to place a bet, I mean, please don't take this with any uh, sincerity or, or don't take it as gospel, but I would probably say that if you were to get a question on class inequality, it would probably be centred either on uh, general explanations, so like outline and assess sociological explanations of class, or it would probably be kind of on a specific explanation you just have to outline and assess um, there aren't or, I mean I suppose the other potential question that you could get is to assess the views specifically of the changing class structure so are we polarizing as per the Marxist view or are we fragmenting as per the Weberian um, slash postmodernist view when we look at ethnic inequality the division is mostly between cultural explanations and structural explanations on the one hand, you have cultural explanations that would argue that ethnic inequality is due to the culture of the ethnic minorities that are suffering the inequality. There may be traditions, norms or values that are holding them back, or perhaps they're not learning the language properly. This is most commonly assigned to the functionalist perspective, most important one being Patterson. But it's not necessarily just the functionalist perspective. Other people like Sewell 
would argue that there are just specific practices in some ethnic minority communities that are holding them back. On the other hand, you have structural theories that would argue that it's not the fault of the ethnic minorities, but it's the fault of society for being structured in a way that holds those ethnic minorities back. For instance, Marxists would argue that it's due to the capitalist system exploiting ethnic minorities as cheap labour, whereas Weberians would argue that it's due to a conflict between status groups in terms of ethnic identity. You also have the concept of institutional racism and how society may be structured in a way that disadvantages ethnic minorities on an institutional scale. So with ethnic inequality and age inequality we did through the videos anyway so I won't need to kind of run you through those as much because I'll just be repeating myself to death. But we should kind of know by now that the two main sides of the ethnic inequality argument come into cultural explanations versus structural explanations. It's possible that you could get asked about kind of uh, consensus versus conflict. Um, but again, we, we should kind of know by now that consensus theories, we're thinking of the new right, we're thinking of functionalism. Conflict theories, we're thinking um, Marxism, Weberian theory, even p potentially black feminism or feminism in general. Um, that's also the potential questions that you could get um, for actually all, all four of them. Um, but in, in terms of ethnic inequality, I think probably the main kind of stretch or thrust of the question is going to be kind of structural versus cultural. And last but not least, we have age inequality, which we've done recently. Age inequality is more or less divided between consensus theories and conflict theories. The consensus theories fall under functionalism and the new right. They would argue that society generally has a smooth functioning agreement on norms and values. And so, any kind of disadvantage suffered by the elderly or the young is because they're not fully integrated into that set of norms and values, or, perhaps, society has generally agreed that, say for instance, the elderly need to slowly withdraw from society. The most commonly cited study in this area is probably disengagement theory by Cummings and Henry. But also, Parsons' theory of the roles for the different age groups is an incredibly important one in this area too. On the conflict side, they would argue that age inequality is not a natural process, but it's actually the result of oppression and exploitation from different groups. For instance, the most commonly cited one here is Marxism, that would again argue that the young and the old are exploited and used to benefit the capitalist system. But then, alongside consensus and conflict theories, you also have interactionist theories that would argue that society is not necessarily a top-down creation where we're being influenced by society, but we influence society as well. And so you have labelling theory that would argue that the young and the, el the elderly are simply a result of labels and stereotypes that we in, as a society have created through things like the media. So with age, I think probably the most likely candidate for questions here is going to be consensus versus conflict, which again, consensus, new right, functionalism, conflict, Weberian, um, Marxist, that kind of thing. Um, you know, or, or perhaps they could argue or, or put forward a statement of some kind, like, you know, um, outlined and assessed the view that age inequality is beneficial to society or something like that. Um, or outline the view that age inequality is due to benefit capitalism. Any kind of statement which coincides with a theory. But with things like that, they are basically just asking you to outline and assess whatever view it is. It's just revising and knowing enough to be able to decipher those statements um, and knowing what theory it corresponds to. So, um, in terms of final thoughts, um, you know, this is just an overview, and I realise I've literally just thrown information at you um, at light speed, but I thought it might just be useful to give you a broad overview of the kind of questions that you might get for this unit. Even if it's not 100% useful now, it will be perhaps when you're doing your exam and you can come back and watch this when you're doing your revision, 
and it might help you guide your your learning a little bit more um, because just kind of reading loads of information on these inequalities isn't going to be too useful whereas helping uh, guiding it towards certain questions is going to be a lot more useful so knowing that you have to revise consensus versus conflict or knowing that you have to revise structural versus consensus will help you revise smartly rather than just learning loads of studies and then not having it placed in any context. So, you know, even if it might not be useful now, I think it's going to be incredibly useful um, with whoever you've got next year. Um, you know, just helping you, it's just an extra, extra bonus, I suppose. Um, but yeah, uh, for the assessment on Friday, it's not going to be anything different. Um, I might give you an extra couple of days, you know, give you kind of half the half term, I guess, to do it, because it is two questions. Um, so, you know, just to let you have a bit of a, a break as well. Um, I mean, if you want to do it, just square on the Friday, so you've got your half term to fr uh, free, then that's fine. Um, but I'll give you an extra couple of days because I am a merciful God. <laughs>